this video, we'll be taking a look at the Canon FL 1200mm f11 SSC lens from 1972. It's nearly a meter long, weighs 6 kilograms, and has a minimum focusing distance of 40 meters. It is truly built like a tank. Only Aquaman would call it a practical walk around lens. So, why am I reviewing this 50 year old behemoth in 2021? Well, three reasons. Its unique focal length, its relative weight, and price. 1200mm is a very niche focal length, and Canon only made four models. This FL mount version was the first in 1972, followed by two FD mount lenses, and finally the now legendary EF mount lens in 1993. The EF version is much faster than the FL version, offering a maximum aperture of 5.6 versus f11 on the FL lens. The EF version also has autofocus, but the EF lens also tips the scales at a crippling 17 kilograms, requiring two people to transport safely, versus just six kilograms on the FL. The EF version is also nearly impossible to find, as Canon only made less than 20 of them. The last one was sold in 2015 for $180,000 American, which is just slightly above my price range for a house. Meanwhile, I found an FL lens list on eBay for $1,250 US dollars. For some context, it originally retailed in the 70s for 160,000 yen in Japan and $1,750 in the US. Adjusting those prices for inflation, we get a range of between $4,000 to $11,000 in 2021. Though you usually knock a third off the value for their long expired warranties and additional discounts depending on its overall condition. All things considered, $1,250 US dollars seemed reasonable. But due to a baffling lack of interest, I managed to negotiate the price down to $1,100, including shipping. But I still lied to my wife and told her I picked it up from a thrift store for $5. Honestly, I bought it because it felt like a bargain without knowing exactly what to do with it or what it could even do. The longest focal length I owned before was just 200 millimeters. Unsurprisingly, a 1,200 millimeter focal length is simply insane. To give you an idea what the framing looks like, hold your pinky finger out to the horizon and imagine your fingernail being the framing of the lens. I instinctively pointed the lens to the furthest subject I could possibly think of, which is the moon. Thankfully, we've had a series of supermoons in 2021. It was the first time I saw the moon in such stunning detail up close. Now, slapping on a 2x extender will turn the lens into a crazy 2,400mm lens, but it will degrade image quality significantly. And when a supermoon rose behind a skyscraper under construction, I finally understood why lenses with extreme focal lengths like this exist. It obviously makes the moon look much bigger, but at the same time, by being so far away, it makes buildings and landscapes look relatively smaller compared to the moon. So imagine trying to take the same framing using, say, a 50mm lens. The building will have to be photographed much closer, and by doing so, the moon will just be this small white blob of light. And in the process, I discovered a mysterious community of sun and moon chasing cultists who call themselves photo pillars. Named after the photo pills app they worship and use to calculate the sun and moon's alignment relative to buildings and landscapes, not unlike the ancient Mayans. Anyway, do check out their epic photos on Instagram, it's well worth a look. But remember, you don't need a 1200mm lens to get in on the fun. The majority of the moon shots you'll see are usually taken using a 100-600mm lens. Now, while the resulting photos and videos are quite unlike anything I've captured before, there were a bunch of challenges to overcome before I could put this beast to work. Problem number one, the mount. It was the first time I had even heard of the FL mount, and when I bought the lens, frankly, I wasn't sure if I could find the right adapter for my Canon R5. According to the interwebs, the FL and FD mount is quite similar. So I gambled and bought an FD to RF adapter from eBay, and thankfully it worked just fine. Problem number two, weight. 
A heavy duty tripod and gimbal is a must have to support its considerable six kilogram weight. I found a secondhand Wimbley head and Manfrotto tripod that does the job, but all in, you're looking at hauling 12 kilograms plus up and down stairs and hills using your decrepit post pandemic body. Even then, the wind blowing can still mess up your footage. Some resources online have recommended using two tripods to ensure sharpness, which I haven't explored because of my aforementioned decrepit post-pandemic body. Problem number three, the jiggle. Given the extreme focal length, just touching the shutter or record button will jiggle the image like crazy for 10 solid seconds before it settles. So I often have to bin the first 10 seconds of footage, which as we all know is exactly when the coolest stuff happens. So it's best to use a wireless remote or Canon's mobile app to trigger the camera, which I always forget to set up. Problem number four, nailing focus. It is a manual focus lens where you twist this giant knob at the side, but the very act of turning the focus knob will result in the dreaded jiggle. Now, this translates to a harrowing decision whether or not to mess with the focus ever so slightly to get a sharper image. But with a 10 second wait for the jiggle to settle to see whether the gamble paid off. But honestly, after 10 seconds, I usually can't remember which one was sharper, pre-focus adjustment or post. Furthermore, while the overall focus throw is very significant, at the extreme infinity end, there's very little play between, say, getting a building in focus and getting the moon in focus. Finally, because of the extreme distance of the subject, heat waves can also make it difficult to determine whether the lens is truly in focus or not. And when photographing, say, the moon, you need a really clear night to get the sharpest image, which is something totally out of your control. Problem number five, composition. With other lenses, you can pretty much compose the scene with your eye before looking through the viewfinder. But with a 1200 millimeter lens, your subject will be so far away, you won't even know what exactly is in your composition until you point the lens to the scene and have a look on the tiny rear LCD or viewfinder. But on the plus side, when you get home to review the footage, you might be pleasantly surprised by little details you didn't notice like these construction workers welding away into the night. Composition is also made difficult because it's a very restrictive and extreme prime lens. The only way to get a wider shot is to literally walk backwards for a few kilometers. Problem number six, curious bystanders. Now, at best, people will ask if it's a telescope. Photographers might want to take selfies with it. At worst, you'll have to put up with people making Taliban bazooka jokes or pointing at you yelling sniper, sniper, just a hundred meters away from the palace gates. True story, that one. Problem number seven, storage. Now these long lenses usually come with a flight case in which you can put some silica gel inside to prevent fungus. But unfortunately, mine didn't come with a case. And trying to find a dry cabinet 90 centimeters wide on the inside that can accommodate a lens this long is not easy. Thankfully, the lens is modular. It can be separated into two pieces consisting of the focusing unit and the lens itself. Now, while waiting for a more permanent solution, I've resorted to using a padded tripod bag with silica inside. According to Canon rumors, two RF 1200mm lenses are in the works with an f8 and f10.5 aperture. There's even talk of a 2000mm mirror lens in the pattern list. Now, I have little doubt that these lenses will be lighter, smaller, faster, sharper, have autofocus and image stabilization, and will even make you coffee in bed in the morning if you treat it right. But I suspect that the price will be prohibitively expensive for Comparison, the current EF 800mm f5.6 LIS sells for 13,000 US dollars. These new RF super telephoto lenses will likely cost as much or even more. So can I recommend the FL 1200mm lens? If you can get one for $1,000 or so, yes, it's a lot of fun. 
But the only other listing I saw on eBay was for something like 5,000 euros, which frankly is a bit rich for my blood, simply because it's a very, very niche lens. Beyond moon and astrophotography, it's probably too long and slow for most wildlife, except maybe for really lazy and violent animals who don't move much. For sports, remember that it has a 40 meter minimum focusing distance. That's about a third of a football pitch, and it will still be a very tight shot on your subject. Maybe it might be useful for law enforcement, surveillance, or photographing weddings you weren't invited to. And on that note, it's worth verbalizing the need to resist a very real temptation of voyeurism with this lens, because let's be real, it's a pervert's dream lens. Anyway, I hope that this has been somewhat interesting and entertaining. I made this video because there was just one other 10-year-old video on YouTube on this lens. Plus, there's not a lot of things that you can photograph during a lockdown, so I figured let's make some lens videos for YouTube. Because if there's one thing photographers love to do more than take photos, is watch lens reviews on YouTube. Thanks for watching, and I hope you're all healthy and safe wherever you may be. Take care.